Title, Bluey's Secret Cousin Chapter 1, The Mysterious Package Jake was an ordinary eight-year-old boy living in Brisbane with his dad, Tom. They loved exploring the park, playing soccer, and going on weekend adventures. But one rainy afternoon, something extraordinary happened that would change Jake's life forever. A knock at the door interrupted Jake's game of Super Mario. He rushed to see who it was, but no one was there. He only a small, brightly colored package left on the doormat. The package had no return address, just a label that read, for Jake. Curious, Jake brought the package inside. His dad joined him as they carefully unwrapped it. Inside was a small plush toy of a blue healer puppy and a note written in a playful, curly font. To Jake, you may not know this. But you're part of our family. Come find us. Love, Bluey and Bingo. Jake looked up at his dad. Puzzled. Dad, who's Bluey and Bingo? Tom's eyes widened in surprise. Bluey and Bingo? Those are the names of characters from a popular kids TV show. But why would they send us a package? Chapter 2, The Healer Family Secret. Determined to find out more, Jake and Tom started investigating. They watched a few episodes of Bluey together and Jake was instantly captivated by the fun adventures of Bluey, Bingo, and their family. But the mystery remained. How could a TV character send him a package? And what did they mean by your part of our family? Jake decided to ask his dad directly. Dad, do we have any relatives we don't know about? Tom hesitated, looking thoughtful. Well, there is a story my dad used to tell me. It was about our ancestors being connected to something a broken bar special. But I always thought it was just a family legend. What kind of legend? Jake asked. His curiosity peaked. Tom smiled. The legend goes that a long time ago, one of our ancestors was part of a magical family, a family of blue healers who could sometimes take human form. But over the generations, the magic faded and they became more like regular people. I never thought it was true. Jake's mind raced. Could it be that he was somehow related to Bluey and her family? Chapter 3, Journey to Bluey's World. The next day, Jake and his dad decided to follow the clues in the note. They went to a local park that was a lot like the one in Bluey. As they explored, Jake felt a strange sense of familiarity, as if he had been there before. Suddenly, a gust of wind swirled around them, and before they knew it, the park transformed. It was still the same place, but everything seemed more vibrant and colorful. Jake noticed something strange. Yeah, there were no other humans around, only dogs walking on two legs, playing, and talking to each other. A blue healer puppy came running up to them, her tail wagging excitedly. Hi, I'm Bluey. You must be Jake. We've been waiting for you. Jake and his dad were speechless. Bluey was real and she was standing right in front of them. Bluey led them to her house, where Bingo and their parents, Bandit and Chili, welcomed them warmly. Over a delicious snack of paw-shaped biscuits, Bluey and Bingo explained everything. Long ago, our great-great-grandparents were magical beings who could be either humans or dogs, Bluey said. But over time, they chose to stay as dogs because it was more fun. The magic faded, but a little bit still lives in our family. That's how we found you. Jake. Jake's dad nodded, finally understanding the family legend. So, our family is connected to yours through that magic. That explains the package. Bingo jumped up and down excitedly. It's so cool that you're our cousin, Jake. We can play together and go on heaps of adventures. Chapter 4, Adventures with Bluey. Over the next few days, Jake and his dad spent time in Bluey's world joining in on all sorts of imaginative games. Jake found himself feeling right at home, especially when he realized that he shared a special bond with Bluey and Bing. Oh, his imagination was just as wild and creative as theirs. They played Magic Xylophone, where Jake found out that he could actually make things freeze with a tap. They also had a granny's dance-off, where Jake and Bluey dressed up as hilarious old grannies and caused all sorts of chaos in the pretend supermarket. But the best part was the day they all went on a treasure hunt together. Bluey, Bingo, Jake, and their dad solved clues that led them through forests, over rivers, and even into a hidden cave where they found an ancient treasure chest. Inside was an old family photo of their ancestors of blue healers and humans standing side by side, smiling. See, Jake, Bluey said, 
pointing at a young boy in the photo who looked just like Jake. That's your great-great-granddad. He used to play with my great-great-granddad all the time. Jake grinned. He finally understood that no matter how different they looked, they were all part of one big, magical family. Chapter 5, Back to the Real World When it was time to go back to their world, Bluey and her family gave Jake and his dad a special charm a small pendant shaped like a paw. This will let you visit us anytime, Chili explained. And remember, you'll always be family. Jake hugged his new cousins tightly. I'll be back soon. He promised. Back in their ordinary world, nothing had changed except for one thing. Jake now had a story that no one would believe but him and his dad. But that didn't matter. He knew the truth. From that day on, whenever Jake looked at the pendant or watched Bluey on TV, he smiled, knowing that somewhere out there, he had a family of talking, playful blue healers waiting for him to come back and join in the fun. And as for Jake's imagination, it was wilder than ever, filled with all the adventures he had with his secret cousins, Bluey and Bingo. The end.